I don't care. It's one nil. If we keep down, thirteenth in the championship. The takeover happened, as I said it would. People will be. Oh, when when have we got leads? That was not the news we were all expecting, was it? Not a good press conference. Good in terms of content and questions. It wasn't like the banal stuff we've had to deal with over the past few weeks. I thought the questions and everything was decent and we got a lot out of it. There was a lot of meat on the bones. It's just, it, it, it was like vegan meat, you know what I mean? It wasn't good meat that we had on the bones. It wasn't your steak, steak ta -ta. It wasn't, you know, your, 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 your veal, you know, it was, it was fake meat. Do you know what I mean? It just wasn't good, was it? Um, Pascal Strauch, out, Creswell, not involved, which means only one thing. Of course, that man, Liam Cooper, will start at centre-back. Listen, you know I have enough faith in him, but we need Pascal back as soon as possible because Pascal, for me, is pivotal to what Leeds United do. And, you know, I think he's the more important centre-back. I said that, and people disagreed with me, and that's totally fine. It's all about opinions. But I do think we will struggle now to progress the ball out because that's what he's he's very good at. In terms of progressive carries, progressive passes, that's what he's there to do. Rodon's your, you know, your meat and potatoes. I, I, I'm doing him a disservice because he can also pass the ball. I am. But he's your meat and potatoes. He puts his nose on the end of balls and stuff. And I'm not saying he can't play with the ball at his feet because he can. But I just think Pascal's that little uh, level above. And he's, he's certainly levels above Cooper in terms of being able to do that. We know that Cooper likes a crossfield ball, but outside of that, there's not much going on. Um, so, yeah, a little bit disappointed, I can't lie to you. We did hear some positives on Joe Rodon. We will get stuck into it. Daniel Farker confirming that Joe Rodon is not going anywhere. Um, so that's totally fine. We spoke about Cree, Nonto, obviously. Nonto, there's a lot of noise in Italy at the minute that he could potentially exit. So we've got loads to get into. Um, but, yeah, the big... Big opening gambit is the fact that Pascal Strauch uh, is injured. Big up to Solomon in the chat as well. Everyone being here, please do smash a like on the video. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Get your comments in. Hit the notification bell. I'll be back at 6 o'clock for White Rose Rivals. So make sure you tune into that as well. And make sure you've got your notifications on. If you haven't had a chance either, make sure you watch my reaction to the Man United goals. It was doing really well last night. It was doing quite decent. And then UEFA put a copy strike on it because I showed too much of a clip. So I had to edit it down a little bit, which I was really, really frustrated about. Um, so I had to put a new one out. So if you could show that some love, please do. Um, pay your rent, smash a like on the video. Let's get stuck into the press conference then. So first and foremost, as you do, we were asked about injuries. Joffy, he doesn't have to have surgery. He will be back during the international break. Joffy isn't really involved of late, is he? Shackleton, the same. So Shackleton won't need surgery. Um, I don't think it was ever in question, actually, that part. But he um, he will not play this weekend either. And he will also train during the international break. Dallas is on individual training still. So not team training as of yet. He does little bits here and there, um, but nothing major. Apparently, the Northern Ireland manager said he'd be involved in the camp and Daniel Farker said, no, he won't. He said they get a few days off. Maybe he'll go over to support them, but he will not be getting involved in team training at Northern Ireland, uh, which is only right. <laughs> uh, Bamford out with illness. Um, got some sniffles or something. Um, he's been in light session since. Again, I mean, he's good to have off the bench, but it doesn't affect the starting lineup. Joffy's not involved, though, so I'm not sure who will play in that striker role. Maybe we might see Matteo Joseph promoted to the first team. That could have been a question that could have been asked, right? He could have been asked about that. Maybe he had a few niggly injuries as well. He was asked about Junior Firpo. Um, it's quite funny, actually, because it, it sort of confirms my my feelings towards this man. But he was asked if he's going to be ready anytime soon. Obviously, he's not played a lot of fo football. And, you know, Farker said, look, he, he hasn't had a game for months. Um, He's been out that long that normally this is the recovery time for an ACL injury. This is what Daniel Farker says. He's had many, many little niggles. And this is where I call into question Junior Firpo. Because he, if you're out for as long as what would normally be recovery time for an ACL injury... Your body's broke, but 
I dare say he prefers the treatment table as opposed to actually getting, you know, mud on his boots. That's just my opinion, and I'm sick of talking about him. When he was pictured in the match day, you know, I'm going to be there, you know, and, and everyone was, like, putting compilations up and all this sort of jazz. Yeah, anyway, uh, it's what it is. And then you've got Pascal Straub, who's been playing with a double hernia injury. He's been putting him through, himself through the ringer. Do you see what I'm saying about certain individuals? when needed, you know, and then you've got the fan base willing to bloody, you know, get on the knees for him, some of them, I find it mad, I, f I find it mad for me, because especially when you find out that, that Pascal's actually been carrying this double hernia for a long time, and still continue to play, and play to a very, very good level, Um, so there you go, Uh, that's my thoughts on him, Jed Spence, he's in the final stages, um, should be back in training after the international break. This is the thing. I think we all thought that he, he might be back for Plymouth. And then, uh, but I remember you could tell a couple, even a couple of press conferences ago that you know it was still going to be after the international break. And even then, he's not going to be ready to play against Rotherham, which is our first game after the international break on the Friday. Because he said, you know, he's at the final stages. He should be back in team training after the international break. So he's not going to be ready to be playing on the Friday. Um, so he was asked why it's taken so long. I think Baron said, look, you know, we originally felt he might be here for Plymouth. Um, and he said, look, he was in the final stages. He had some illnesses, tonsillitis and other bits. Um, so that's caused a few problems, but he's on track. Um, but yeah, it looks like we might get him maybe closer to December, I'd say. Um, I think we've got two games left in November, maybe. Um, we've got the, the Rotherham game and then there's another on the Wednesday night. Let me have a look. Um... I'm just going to check that uh, when that is. Uh, November fixture, Swansea. So we play Swansea. So we've got two games left. And then 2nd of December, we play Middlesbrough, which would be a great time, actually, for Jed Spence to return. The story. Yeah, that would be nice. Obviously, he was at Borough and he didn't work out with Warnock and he went to Forest, etc. And they don't like him there. Michael says, did you ask out the girl at the pizza? She wasn't in. She wasn't in. Um, because it was a Wednesday night, there was only one person in, whereas on a Friday, Saturday, it's packed and there's loads of them. But no, she wasn't in, but thank you for checking in with me, Michael. Um, so that was Spence. Um, Phil Hay asked him if it was frustrating you've not been able to use him. Well, obviously, like, <laughs> of course it's frustrating because he's the top player. Um, I would have liked someone to ask who's going to deputise for Bamford if, if he's... Um, He's not going to be in the match day squad, you know. Um, but there you go. Of course, you would miss someone of, of uh, Spencer's quality. Um, so then the big bit, the bad news, Pascal Strauch. He's out Saturday and he's also gone for surgery, okay? No time frame on it. This is the thing. So it depends on the surgery. He doesn't just have one and he has two. So he's got a double hernia. Um, he's had problems for a while. So he's been pushing through the pain barrier. However, at the weekend uh, or Friday night, whenever it was against Leicester, the pain was a bit too much for him. So they've said it's the right decision at this moment in time to send him for surgery. Um, he said, we hope to have him back, but we're not so sure. I hope he won't miss too many games. Now, of course, the footballers and medical, um, uh, medical staff at Leeds United are much more... Um, more in tune with what's needed and surgery and they'll be able to recover in quicker. But I had a quick Google and according to um, the NHS, um, after about a week, you should be able to have gentle activity around your home. Uh, you should feel more comfortable and be able to walk short distances and do light activities. Do not do any heavy lifting or strenuous exercise for six weeks. OK, that's from the NHS. And it says this will help and prevent the hernia from returning. So what they'll want to do, having gone through surgery, they're not going to be in a place to then say, right, let's get your weight bearing and, you know, go through um, uh, intense training and match days. So it could be a while, folks. And this is the worry, isn't it? And they might find something else. I'm a little bit worried about it. I'll share with you the NHS page. This is it here. Gentle activity, as I say, uh, around the home, which will help your wound heal just let me see. Yeah, you can see that. All right. Um, let me get back to it. Uh, do not do any heavy lifting or strenuous exercise for six weeks. This will help with the healing and prevent the hernia from returning. Um, 
so this is the point. Uh, look, avoid driving until you're free of pain. So if they're advising this, there's not a chance that after the international break, he's going to be back in training. Not for me anyway. Um, so within one to two weeks, they're saying don't be driving. Well, one to two weeks is the international break. Do you see what I'm saying? So he's not going to be back when we come back, is he? He's not going to be ready when we return. Um and it, and that my my main thing is is the fact that it says do not do any heavy lifting or strenuous exercise for six weeks. Now I'm not a medical profession, and people are no different. And of course, Rob Price and everybody that go will will know and and get him back. Um, so this is the issue. Here's uh, Joe uh, from Last Word. He says I had a hernia since about a month before the second walk. Didn't do anything about it because I didn't want to drop out, but I feel Pascal's pain. Well, if you were able to walk 90 miles, bro, then maybe it ain't as bad. But I'm just going on. Um, yeah, Mark says, and again, Mark, you're probably right. This is what I'm saying. Of course, you're probably right. But what we have to remember as well, these are fine-tuned athletes. These are like racehorses, right? So they're not going to send him for surgery, then run the risk of him aggravating that or making it worse after him going for surgery. So they're going to be careful with it, right? So as frustrated as you'll be, you're going to be locked in with Cooper for a while, right? I'm glad we're not in the Premier League because I, I, then I'd be, I'd, be, I'd be worried about taking shellackings. We still have enough quality. Let's not lose our heads, but it is very, very bad. It is bad. And, and it just depends how long he's going to be out for. Um, but yeah, Pascal, disappointed. Um, really, really disappointed. And it's terrible news, to be honest. Um, Cooper back in, he was asked then, will Cooper play? And he said, I won't speak on it, but it's obvious we do have other options. He didn't want to speak on it because he didn't want to give the lineup away. But you and me all know that the option's Cooper. There is no other options. Creswell's not been involved in training due to personal issues. I hope everything's all right with Creswell. But Creswell wouldn't play anyway, let's be honest. Uh, Cooper's going to come in. Who else are you going to use? Leo Hjelde? It's not going to happen, is it? So so Cooper will come in and, and be that left-sided centre-back. So as much as Daniel Farker don't want to give anything away, it, it will be Cooper, we know this. Um, and like I say, um, Creswell out for personal reasons. I hope everything's all right. Sticking with the centre-back, he was asked about Joe Rodon. Obviously, we know Spurs have a lot of injuries. However, I've actually spoken... Listen, I didn't think... I said to you all anyway, dinner on a watch-along or wherever it was. It might have been the Rotherham uh, Ipswich result. I said he won't get called. You know, they have other options there. Hoybier can play there. Ben Davis, Eric Dyer. They're not going to re uh, replace him. And then, obviously, this, this news was released. So I reached out to Matt Hayes and also Tapping Tobes, who are obviously Tottenham content creators just to get their opinion on it. Matt told me about this. So Tottenham Hotspur summer signing Ashley Phillips has not been included in the under-21 squad. So he's actually been promoted to the uh, Spurs squad for this weekend. He's very highly thought of. So they're not going to be in the process of recalling Rogan anyway. Before that, they couldn't anyway until January, like Jamie's just said. But Daniel Farker was asked, will he stay here past that? And he said yes. Categorically, he said yes. Um, so no worries there. Um, sticking with Leeds United players, we'll go to Cree Somerville. I'm seeing a lot of positive things coming out about Cree over the last uh, couple of days. Uh, he's obviously done an interview. Not sure quite where or where it's come from, um, but I'll share this with you as well. Cree's obviously very, very happy here. You can understand why he was asked the question, but it's a major boost for me. I hope I can continue playing well for the club. Leeds has the best fans. I want them to come to Elden Road so I can hopefully create many more special moments for them. I want to return back with Leeds to the Premier League. It's about fighting for every ball and every point. So it's clear for us that Cree's not going anywhere. He, he did also uh, chat about Rutter. His quality is unbelievable. He had a difficult time at the beginning, so I tried to help him get through it. Now he feels at home and our partnership is growing really well, which we can all agree on. So I think that's why the questions were posed to Daniel Farker about Cree. Uh, and he said, you know, there was talk of him. And a lot of this came from Jesse. Because he said that he was the one that was naughty and Nonto was the one that needs to keep him on track. But we all believed, me, believed that if anyone was going to kick up a fuss, it would have been Cree. That's what I believed. Anyone who said different, I disagree. At that time, we believed this. And um, so 
Graham Smith said, like, when you first came in, there was a lot of talk about him potentially going, what happened when you got here? And Daniel Farker said, you know, many players, you can understand it. He's young. You know, they think, where's my career going now? Um, but many players did feel like this. And he spoke about coming in and the group getting better and with the way they go about their business. And it almost came across to me that he had a hand in him st staying. It makes you wonder if he's had a conversation with Cree. A bit like Maresca did at Les Leska, because I know that a lot of them wanted to leave. The manager came in. He's probably said, this is how we're going to play. These are my principles. This is how we go about our business. And Cree's gone, I'm in. I'm in. You know? Um, so that's a positive. And it, it did sound to me that maybe, you know, Daniel Farker has, uh, had worked his magic. And, you know, he was asked a little bit later on about the dressing room and how good it was. And he spoke about his methodology. And we can see as a fan base now, of course, it helps when you're winning games of football. But we can see as a fan base how together the group would see. Um, but, yeah, um, definitely. Uh, he was then asked about Nonto um, because he... There's a lot of talk in Italy. His agent's always at it. Let's be honest. His agent's always at it. He's got his same agent as Zaniolo. They're his big two players. They're his cash cow. His agent's a snake. Um, I actually asked a question on the Plymouth Ipswich watch along. Would you be adverse to selling him? And, and the, the majority said, no, they're not too fussed, if I'm honest, if I remember rightly. I think it was about 60%. But what D D D Daniel Farker did say was, I'm not going to speak about this. You know, we spoke about all this in the summer. I'm not speaking about it now. I'm concentrating on games. Let's wait till we need to speak about it. So it's going to be January time, isn't it? But um, the noise will be around Nonto. You you might even still get Premier League clubs that might come and sniff in. But Leeds United need to hold firm because for me, there is clearly a player there. We know that. No one's saying he's rubbish. But his valuation will have reduced for me as well. Because he was a hot property at the end of last season. Now he's not getting game time. That's bargaining chip for the for the football clubs that come in for him. So we need to need him to stay. Um, ideally, we don't want to be going out to replace a player because we'd need to. You know, Jaden Anthony could go back to Bournemouth. I've said to you before, not a lot of people agreed with me or, or believed me, but I was told that clubs had inquired. He will probably have a, 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 a and listen. Anthony's game's improving game time but it's not what he expected and um you know i wanted him to start but to be honest like you're not getting ahead of Cree and dan james at the minute and when he has been used it's it, it's not the one is it so we'll have to wait and see um but like daniel fag says let's wait until that time obviously you know from my perspective throughout december the january chat will start to rumble on who's going to be coming and all that sort of stuff and then in january we're going to be locked in late night leads will return on a regular basis many many streams many many lives many many videos so make sure you've got your notifications on um he was then asked about plymouth uh he sort of buoyed him off for me he went uh, I was listening, and then he went, oh, they're very cheeky as well. I didn't get what he meant. I, I genuinely didn't get away uh, what he meant. Adam Pope mentioned that they are dismal away from home. Good at, uh, good at home, of course. Um, but Daniel Farker did stress the fact about needing to be on it. This was when he was speaking about Cooper, <laughs> about his importance to the team and needing leaders, because he, what he didn't want is just the players turning up thinking they would the game, you know? Because obviously you come off the back of a Leicester result. And we've seen it. Maybe we've seen a bit of it against Chef Wednesday. I think, didn't we batter Watford and then we play Chef Wednesday? It's nil-nil. You don't want them coming off Leicester thinking, we've got this. These are rubbish. Do you know what I mean? So I think um, he mentioned Cooper, you know, and him making sure the players are on it. But he did say we need to be on it. We can't take it lightly. It's still a huge game. And I have to agree with that. I do think we'll win. And I do think we'll win comfortably, uh, if I'm honest. But... Yeah, we have to be on it. But that's not on us. That's the players. We're allowed to be confident, right? Um, he was then asked about the way he's starting games. I think it was Graham Smith because we made a point. Joe made a point. We've spoken about how, you know, we'd started poorly and Daniel Farker had clearly seen that fact because when asked the question, the last two games you started really well, which was Huddersfield and Leicester, which we did. We've seen a distinct change away from home. And, um, you know, why did you make them changes? And he actually came out and said, we, we were aware that this had happened in 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 previous away games, um, so we wanted to make them changes to be on the front foot straight away. Um, so it's it's important to break the opposition's confidence, and we expect more of the same for the weekend. So that's good because Leeds United were not starting games well. Let's be honest; it was all there to see, um, and that hopefully is going to be a, a distinct change now. It's not just going to be the last two; it's gonna it's gonna 
you know, um, be be um, be the norm moving forward. Um, so yeah, that was all the questions. I just want to get to a few of your comments. Christopher says, "I don't understand it, Joe. Stroud has character and backbone." I don't know what you mean. Oh, you you're on about Furfo, right? That's what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Rutter will de demolish P Plymouth. Adam, this is my thought process, bro. I, I just think going forward, we'll have too much for them. Somerville, James, Rutter, Pirro, I'm not too... Uh, I think we need a 10. And if we get a 10, he drops out. Mm. No, Vega, no players to be taken lightly. I don't... I'm not saying that, but I think um, we've got too much quality for them. If we don't win this game, it's it's a disgrace. As Arteta would say, it's a disgrace. It's a disgrace. Um, but yeah, of course, you've got to be careful in every game, Jamie. Of course you have, I understand that. But um, we can't be coming off the back of beating Leicester in what was for me a must-win game, in a in a pivotal moment, in a, in a huge game, in a huge swing, and all the pressure surrounding it to then draw or lose points at home. We've not been beaten at home. Plymouth are terrible away from home. I know how the story goes, but we must win. We have to win. We should win. Let's be real. Uh, that's the uh, that's the that's the point. Um, yeah, Enzio away from home though, really poor, uh, really ho you know, it's uh, different. Listen, they won the league last season, the Ipswich were in, you know, so they're no mugs. Let's not. I'm not. I'm not saying that by any stretch of the imagination. Please hear me. I'm just saying that we, as a club, should have too much. Uh, too much for them. Um, I'm just going to share with you their away form to 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 give you. Um, the uh the look at this so this is the championship away form table and you can see here Plymouth are in uh in 22nd there's only Chef Wednesday and Rotherham that have worse away records uh than them just picking up four points folks and that's um is that no that can't be right uh that's losses sorry just picking up three wins and they're all draws they're all draws uh so they haven't won away from home lost to Ipswich lost uh, drew with West Brom Drew a hole, chain bad results really. Uh, lost to Bristol City four one. Um, I just think I, I I just think we'll have too much for them. Like I say, they've only scored three away from home, conceded fifteen. They conceded fifteen. Um, so there you go. Um, sorry, twelve. I'm looking at Chef Wednesday. Scored six, conceded uh, conceded twelve. Uh, Leeds United have to win this game. Let's not. Um, let's not beat around the bush. We can all say they're good at this, they're good at that, and I get it, but we've got to win this game. Uh, you're not 22nd in the away form table for nothing. Um, but, and Daniel Parker did mention this, Leeds is a massive game. I would argue it's their biggest game. I don't know about rivalry in this division, but Leeds United are a huge club. Leicester won a Premier League, yes, but they're not on the same level in terms of this is Leeds United. I hate to sound like a Man United fan, but come on, we're the biggest team in this division. Everyone hates us as well, so there's that added thing. Leicester fans, it's a bit like me. Yeah, that's for me anyway. But uh, um, Mark B, no, I've seen it. I watched it. Not good. Definitely not good. Was an error for one of the goals as well. He's a midfielder. Do not put him at centre back. Um, do not put him at centre back. This there is this as well. There is um. There is this. Actually, George, yeah, yeah, let, don't, yeah, don't let me give them the flowers. They are a huge club, massive club, well-supported club. Um, I just think nationwide, internationally, not as big as Leeds, but in Sunderland, they're huge. Their numbers are crazy, trust me, but not outside of that. You don't, like, you don't see many, there's Leeds fans everywhere, right? There's Leeds fans everywhere. Anyway, folks, I'm going to leave it there because I've got my hair cut. I'm getting my hair cut uh, half past. Um, so I'm, I'm going to go for my haircut 370 you're watching please do smash a like on the video subscribe to the channel, get your comments in, hit the notification bell, all that jazz, for that person who was asking if White Wolves rivals, sound like Jonathan Wass then, uh, yes it will be 6 o'clock, White Rose rivals will be live at 6 o'clock and then tomorrow um, you've got Big match preview live. I'll do a pre-recorded preview as well. And then obviously game day, Saturday, final word Sunday. Um, and then, yeah, I know there's not much to cut, bro. But um, I don't like it because if you look, just you'll see like a little tough. And I really don't like it. And I should cut it myself. But what I do is I just go, I give them money a month and pay ahead. So that when I need a cut, I can just walk in 
and say, can I get a haircut? And they'll shape up my beard for me as well. So it is what it is. <laughs> Call it a shave. Yeah, I'm going for a shave. <laughs> I'm going for a shave. I just hate that when it starts to grow back. Anyone who's bald will know when you look and you see it, it's like, nah, nah, nah. So I'll just go. Um. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you very much. Enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny actually that in it there is nothing to cut really so you should be there two minutes right bye joe anyway i'll see you in a bit peace out leads 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 love you see you at six